I am Kitty Bagley. I am with the Pittsburgh Botanic Garden. I'm the Director of Development. And the Pittsburgh Botanic Garden is transforming 460 acres of abandoned coal mining land into the region's first outdoor comprehensive botanic garden. So on this 460 acres, there's a large reclamation project. We are taking care of the acid mine drainage that comes out of the old mines. And so we've got a very long-term project cleaning up the water, which will not only make our garden plantable, but will help clear up the Chartiers Creek watershed. On the 60 acres to the north, we've already started work on the Woodlands Garden of the World. That's the first garden in the garden, and our front door, until the reclamation work is done, is this historic homestead where we stand. This homestead dates back to the Revolutionary War, has ties to the Whiskey Rebellion, and will bring it to life with not only additional buildings, but with some animals, heritage sheep and chickens, so that it will be a multi-educational and experiential fun um, botanic garden. The other part of the uh, first phase is the Woodland Gardens. It's an arboretum showcasing five different woodlands. Most of it is the Appalachian Plateau woodlands, which are our native woodlands. We have worked uh, for the last three years removing about 20 acres of invasive plant species, and we've planted about 5,000 native trees, shrubs, and herbaceous perennials. We've built three miles of trails. We've restored a pond to life that was dead due to acid mine drainage. And we have been building these nature play stations for little children. So we have a meadow maze. We have a storybook house. We have lots of interesting, fun things to come and see and do. We ask that people um, who are interested in learning more about the garden, visit our website, which is www.pittsburghbotanicgarden.org. They can see where our, when our peak and preview tours are. They can sign up for different volunteer um, tasks, and they can donate, of course. We also have memberships. We plan to be open next summer, and if you are a member, you will have free admission to the garden. So. We want you to become members. The Pittsburgh Botanic Garden is a, an enormous grassroots project. We depend largely on volunteers, just regular people contributing to make this happen. So it's an extraordinary exercise in grassroots, con grassroots conservation. Our volunteers have done the majority of the work. It's hands-on learning and it is Pittsburgh is the only city its size in the country without a large outdoor botanic garden. So the, our Pittsburgh Botanic Garden will fill that gap, will also be a big recreational asset, an ecotourism asset, an educational asset, and just, just a gem of a conservation piece. In addition, the reclamation work that we're doing uh, makes us the only botanic garden in the United States built on reclaimed coal mining land. And hopefully others can learn from our trial and error and transform some other um, mining land into something beautiful and green. The garden is fairly old. The um, first group to come up with the idea, they would think about it and think, boy, we keep talking about having a botanic garden. So after a couple of years, they said, we need to do something instead of just talking about it. So in 1991, this was actually uh, formed as a corporation. And then they went to look for sites that could be close to the city with lots of acreage and wouldn't cost a lot of money. So in 1998, they signed the lease for this bottom third of what was Settler's Cabin Park, and this is where we are today. The uh, fundraising has happened all along from the very beginning. We had a master plan done in the early 2001-2002 uh, by a local firm with, uh, that's nationally recognized, Marshall Tyler Rausch. We're still working with them. And the fundraising, again, has been grassroots. We've had some foundation and corporate support, but uh, for the most part, it's just 
far-seeing individuals who want to see Pittsburgh have this regional gem. We've, we have had educational programming here. We've had out risk. We have had outreach to at-risk kids. We have adult education. So we try to cover all bases with our education. We have transformed some of our trails to ADA accessible trails. We want this garden to welcome everybody. We don't want to exclude anyone. So our programming and, and how we're building the garden is to make it as all-encompassing as possible. We, ha we brought some small children in this summer and they were very uncomfortable being in this kind of environment. It's sort of wild for children who are mostly used to urban spaces. And this one little girl in particular was so unhappy that she was crying and asking to go home because every leaf was poisonous in her eyes and every bug or spider was poisonous as well. So we went back to the storybook house and she settled down a little bit and you know, listened to the story. They were all very rapt and um, paid very good attention. And then we walked back um, to the woodlands, through the woodlands again, and she seemed to be okay. And then realized that this was the way out and maybe if she cried a little bit again, she could go home. So we, a number of us talked to her. The next stop was the meadow. We went to the dogwood meadow and the butterfly lady was there talking about butterflies. There was a picture of the butterfly lady and her children holding butterflies. And I was on my knees taking pictures and some of the children said to me, how do we do that? How do we hold butterflies? And I said, well, maybe you can stand very still and put your hands out like this and maybe butterflies will come land on it. No sooner had I said that than a little white cabbage butterfly did land on my thumb. And for the next five or six minutes, it landed on nine or ten of these upturned tiny hands, hoping the butterfly would land on them. And it was, it was, it was miraculous. So this little girl sort of overcame her fear. You know, she said, does it hurt? Does it tickle? She didn't like hurt, she didn't like tickle. But she was seeing this butterfly land on all her colleagues' hands, and so she wanted that same experience. And um, so she put her hands out, but because she was so nervous, she kept jerking them away as soon as the butterfly came close. So the butterfly did not land on her hand. However, we left the meadow, went back into the woodlands for the third lesson, which was on bugs and dirt, and that child sat on the ground next to me. The one who didn't even want her feet touching the ground a little earlier had now been so enchanted by this butterfly that she felt at home in the environment. And that was just such a win for everybody because now she'll grow into someone who thinks about the environment and conservation will matter to her.